Hello everyone, I am Zerix, Lord Sentinel, and welcome back to Century of Economy 2020! When we left off, resources were about to change. The Spanish had assembled a fleet of eternal ships, and the French and pirates were gathering massive amounts of gold. Now, on to the action! The resource die are rolled, with a 1 coming up for duration and a 3 for value. This is the shortest duration yet seen, and factions will have difficulty capitalizing on their valuable resources, unless they already had stocks with them on their home island. The Spanish continue operations as usual, with ships docking at Voyanui and loading medicine. The Babieca emerges from a whirlpool, careful to avoid the reef moved over it by the pirates. The Concepcion repairs at Fortaleza Dorada, a cargo of silver in her hold left over from the Blood Islands. The Castigue and Galleon de Gibraltar sail in tandem to the north of the fortress, fortifying the defenses in the area. The middle of Spanish territory is strangely empty, with few ships. Many of their ships are concentrated at Voyanui, the former American home island, and their own home island. A little farther south, the chain of corsairs stretches from the hidden cove to the home island. The canoes and a few gold ships are visible off the southern coast of the lagoon. The Spanish home island. They are still processing their silver from the blood islands, as well as taking in metals and other resources. Ships of the Eternal Fleet are repairing, or are being towed to a safe harbor to repair. Up close on the home island itself, the Spanish have several hundred gold, as signified by the grey ghost coins, in addition to the piles of regular gold. To the right, the various hoisted ships process silver and metals from the Corsair chain. To the left, the Morte has finished repairing and is waiting for new Generia crew before setting off for the front lines. From the west looking east at the Spanish home island, like the pirates and French, the Spanish have breached 1,000 gold, cashing in all of the metals they have saved up on their home island. The French have over 2,000 gold, and are not sure how best to spend it. They are still hoping that the Spanish will leave the area they wanted to expand to, and are doing decent business with the pirates. The pirates establish a level 1 colony just south of the Pyramid Island. With the round over, the resource values changed again, 
and again the duration came up a 1, with a 6 for value, making lumber and medicine the most valuable resources for a turn. The Spanish do not have easy access to lumber, and not as much stored medicine, and no ships to bring in more on such short notice. However, there is a mass pileup as ships attempt to get out to Gold Islands, potential combat spots, and get back to the home island. More ships enter the bay, their sights set on the single beach. The value of medicine will likely drop after this round of resources, but the Spanish have decided to make gathering the resource a priority. The San Cristobal repairs at the trading port on the lagoon. The Spanish hold their position around the former American home island. The French have kept an active presence in this area as well. Ulujali is hired by the Spanish to bolster the defenses of the military port on Shark Tooth Island. From the north looking south, the Bone Temple Island is prominently featured, and almost all the French can be seen. Their home island is just to the east, and their defensive line against the Spanish is just visible to the west. French waters to the west of the Bone Temple are congested, though not openly. The Spanish are occupying the space where the Americans were, and the French would like to expand to there. Their defensive line is not as massive as the pirates, but still must be taken seriously. The pirates rapidly level up their colony, pushing it from level 1 to level 4 in just two turns, using fleet actions on the various colonizing ships. The pirates have a vast storage of metals and finished goods, and are waiting for an opportune time to cash them all in. The new resource rolls are made, with a complete reversal. A 12 comes up for duration, the maximum amount, and a 1 comes up for value, meaning all resources are worth face value. This benefits the pirates the most, since the pirates have easy access to all resources except for lumber. Medicine is not valuable, and will not be for some time. However, it is one of the resources within easy reach for the Spanish. The Muerte del Diablo and a Cruzado Nuevo have emerged from the whirlpools and are making for Fortaleza Dorada to pick up the crew they left there. Back at home, silver is still being processed while the set of canoes from the colony are entering the final leg of their journey. Ships continue to emerge from the whirlpool by the portal. The Spanish have drawn a tight ring around the Americans' former home island. They have plans for the island, heedless of what the French may want. They end their turn with a launch, putting ships into the water at Fortaleza Dorada, the Lagoon, Sharktooth Island, and El Puerto Blanco. El Premier Caballero, with a captain, helmsman, cannoneer, musketeer, fire shot, and oarsman. El Protector de España, with captain, helmsman, cannoneer, musketeer, and oarsman. Resistencia, with captain, helmsman, cannoneer, musketeer, and oarsman. El San Salvador, with captain, helmsman, firepot specialist, and oarsman. Santos Romanos, with captain, helmsman, musketeer, cannoneer, and oarsman. La Cazadora, with captain, Helmsman, Stingpot Shot, and Oarsman. La Reconquistador, with Captain, Helmsman, Fire Shot, and Oarsman. La Catedral del Mar, with Captain, Helmsman, Firepot Specialist, Fire Shot, and Oarsman. El Relampago, with Captain, Helmsman, Cannoneer, Musketeer, and Oarsman. La Asesina, with Captain, Helmsman, Cannoneer, Musketeer, and Oarsman. And El Valiente, with Captain, Helmsman, Cannoneer, Musketeer, and Oarsman. The French launch as well, putting a few ships into the water at St. Pierre. La Richelieu, the Eroica, the Rochefort, the Glaive, and East Wind. Pirate ships converge on their level 5 colony in the southeast. Ships are bringing lumber here and converting it to crops, trying to make the best out of the low value of lumber. Elsewhere, they have upgraded their level 4 colony to their third level 5 colony. Metals are of middling value on the seas. Hence, the pirates haven't cashed in any for quite some time. The stacks of the resource on their home island are tall enough to hide the song in their shadow. A storm makes land at the trading port on Kanoki Island, minimally damaging the port. The Spanish home island is bustling with activity. Silver is still being processed for maximum profit, and the ships of the Eternal Fleet are slowly beginning to repair to full strength, thanks in part to the efforts of the Spanish tugboats and the Casador del Parata ferrying shipwrights out to the various derelicts. The Volar and Viento and Fermo dock at the Spanish colony near the Hidden Cove Island. The two ships are being reassigned to the Voyanui Bay area, now that the Blood Islands have vanished and their presence is not needed around the cove. At the end of their turn, the Spanish launch every Viking ship available, at the Lagoon and at Sharktooth Island. Hrothgar, with Captain, Helmsman, Cannoneer, Musketeer, and Oarsman. Asgard, 
with Captain, Helmsman, Cannoneer, Musketeer, and Oarsman. Munin, with Captain, Helmsman, Cannoneer, and Oarsman. Kronting, with Captain, Helmsman, Cannoneer, and Oarsman. The Valkyrie, with Captain, Helmsman, Cannoneer, Musketeer, and Oarsman. Ragnarok, with Captain, Helmsman, Cannoneer, and Oarsman. And the Loki, with Captain, Helmsman, Cannoneer, and Oarsman. The ships launched by the French at St. Pierre have all loaded the metals stored at the fort, and will be bringing them home for profit. French ships crowd the Pathway Island, loading full holds of food, the second most valuable resource on the seas. The French home island is not as busy as the Spanish, but it is just as crowded. Ships search for a place to dock, while it overflows into the surrounding waters. The presence of an iceberg complicates matters. Pirate operations in the Southeast Ocean. What was at one time a cursed haven is now a pirate paradise. Ships sail from the Triangle Island to the colony, and the trading port on the Pyramid Island, ferrying resources, crops, and gold from their far reaches of pirate territory back to their home island. The pirates have been trading with the French, and have acquired a nice stack of food on their home island. They plan to wait until the last moment to cash the resources in. At the end of their turn, the pirates launch the Grand Barnacle. An iceberg moves through the fog, and crashes into the Triumph. A storm threatens to fall off of the map as it moves eastward. Many heroes of the war against the Americans have made Sharktooth Island their temporary home. The Vaz de Dios and Xinwang Shao are among the capital ships docked at the island, with famous ships such as the Santa Ana, La Resolucion, El Garante, and Trinity sailing about the island, to provide security and protection. The French defensive line has slowly been moving west, giving the Spanish cause for concern. An aerial shot of the Spanish home island. Several ships have forced their way to land on the northern side of the island. Several ships are carrying silver, taken from Blood Islands, and are trying to unload it to the Buscador or Rociante, the two ships in charge of silver processing along with the San Fedora. At the end of their turn, the Spanish finally construct Puerto Blanco, a fort that essentially allows the Spanish to have two home islands. The fort itself only has two 5L cannons, but it is built on the same island as a level 5 colony, giving the island significant defenses. From the west looking east, the divide between the northern and southern oceans is visible. The Spanish have claimed to much of the southern ocean, while the French have control over a good chunk of the northern. A storm has moved onto Kenogi Island, slowly damaging the port structure. If the storm lingers, the port will eventually be destroyed. The French home island, now crowded with ships like the Spanish home island. Ships are swarming in from the pathway island to the north, with holds of valuable food. From the east looking west to the, over the southeastern ocean, the pirates have a large fleet of small treasure runners sailing to the Triangle Island in the far southeastern corner and the colony on the former cursed home island. The Pyramid Island produces finished goods, the most valuable resource on the seas, and the pirates have easy access to this island. At least three ships dock home cargoes of finished goods, which are immediately turned in for gold. And that wraps up this report. Factions are consolidating their power and territory, as well as trying to turn a profit. If you want to see what happens next, make sure you're subscribed. If you like what you saw, hit that like button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.